A very good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this 47th edition of the Together for Education webinars brought to you by Notebook. It feels a little weird saying 47th edition. Months ago, when the lockdown had first started, this session was set up to help teachers get better accustomed to digital learning methods. They were all starting online classes, and we felt that a webinar on a digital platform would perhaps help them get a little more used to digital learning methods. Today, we are perhaps standing closer to the other end of the lockdown, which is why we are today gonna to talk about turning around, reopening of schools. The background that you see there, if you are somebody who grew up in the 80s or the 90s in India, this is something we used to be very familiar with. We used to have a very, very few choices in terms of television channels. The Doordarshan would do us the honor of disappearing once in a while. And for a while, we'd be staring at the screen with this colored pattern on it, saying sorry for the interruption. And then it would come back. Our schools are today facing something like that. There's been a short interruption, but the educators in particular have done a phenomenal job of adopting digital learning methods to ensure that while schools are closed, schooling goes on uninterrupted. And today we are gonna to explore how when schools reopen, they are gonna do that. How they're gonna ensure that academics happen while safety is also taken care of. Before we move on, it's of great pride to us that we have received your support for this event week after week. We had also started a similar initiative called Expert Speak. And I'm very happy to tell all of you that hundreds of teachers have written into us showing their interest in being part of the expert speak sessions. The idea is very simple. If you have a topic that you would want to present to a large audience, we would help you make a video out of it. We at Notebook are an edtech product. We make short crisp videos of various curricular topics tailored to the curriculum that students and teachers can find useful when they're taking their online or offline classes or when they're preparing for their exams months later. The Expert Speak series was tailored to specific topics that the teachers wanted to talk about that perhaps is not part of the regular curriculum, but very important nevertheless. Our producers are honestly backed up by the kind of response we have received and the number of video clips we are editing. We have edited the first few, so I just wanted to introduce those to you. Here's a short clip. It also helps with cognitive development where the children learn to think, they learn to explore and they learn to find out creative ways to their solution. For example, if a child wants to draw a family of four on a piece of paper, how he is going to place them? I would like to start my talk with a quote. Never forget what you are, for surely the world will not. Make it your strength, then it can never be your weakness. Armor yourself in it, and it will never be used to hurt you. I'm going to talk about a stage of life, which is one of the most wonderful stage of anybody's life. Now, how and what a parent must do? I'm going to share that with you. So the big question is, how do we build social emotional skills in our young children? How do we help them in emotional growth? So here are some home activities to build social emotional skills in our young children. Come, let's see what we can do. The most simple and the most easiest way is to play board games and sports. The word games brings life. 
So why not make our classroom fun and lively using games? Educational games bring the material come to life. How? I would like to give an example here. Uh, if you want to teach parts of the plants, instead of teaching parts of the plant through a textbook or through a book, you can give puzzles. So the child will try to assemble the puzzles and learn the correct order. So let's make learning fun through game-based learning. I hope you enjoyed the session. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you for watching my presentation. Thank you. Bye bye. Have a great day. Well, as you just saw, these teachers have helped us by sending us video recordings, or even they have done online video recordings with us, and we have then had our production team. add a little bit of value in terms of art music cleaning up the color the audio etc if there are still people out there who would want to contribute to this with topics that you want to talk about we would ask you to write in and we will help you create these videos with that said ladies and gentlemen it is now my job to introduce our first speaker today our first speaker is ochin bhattacharya ochin is the founder and ceo of notebook a chartered accountant by training ochin was a director at deloitte prior to starting notebook he has worked in india and abroad in various senior capacities in ge pwc kpmg and deloitte he is a recipient of the indian achievers award ochin is an avid reader and a passionate traveler with keen interests in economics history literature and philosophy he is a regular speaker at various forums and chambers of commerce and also contributes articles to numerous publications regularly he is also on the board of some of the most renowned corporates and contributes significantly to their brand strategies ochin over to you good evening everyone shubhay am i audible yeah ochin loud and clear i once again welcome all of you to this thought provoking session today's topic makes me really happy as we are going to talk about hope and optimism from times immemorial as a species human beings have always managed to overcome every adversity and emerge stronger from each storm in the midst of life now today while countries are at different points in terms of covid-19 infection rates there is no denying the fact that education has been impacted and that impact has been huge worldwide there are currently more than 1.2 billion children in 186 countries affected by school closures due to the pandemic now when we look around we see a very varied academic landscape around the globe in terms of approach and response to the pandemic now in denmark for instance to give a global perspective children up to the age of 11 are returning to nurseries and schools but in south korea students are responding to roll call from their teachers online now we have been hearing about various approaches right students coming to school by rotation senior students those who are due to appear for their board exams they be called in for more detailed practice now we'll deliberate on these aspects and considering the fact that we have senior educators with us today in our panel i'm sure we look forward to a very informative panel discussion on this a great panel discussion on this so on my part i'll take a more holistic perspective of the topic and discuss about how countries around the world are looking at reopening of schools what is it that is being discussed across schools across political corridors across ministries around the globe however before i move forward with today's deliberation let me welcome our esteemed panelists and i'm sure they'll share their real life experiences and their vision on the way forward on this topic 
Now, coming to schools, right? Schools provide much more than just academics to children. As we discussed, I look at schools as miniature versions of society, where students learn social and emotional skills, physical activities, and they get access to support, support from their teachers, from their counselors. No, the kind of the role that a particular school, that the role that any school plays. I'll be very honest to say, I firmly believe can never ever be substituted by online learning. Online learning is important. We see how during this pandemic, during the last few months, online learning has really helped students keep pace. It has ensured that schooling has been on, but there's no denying the fact that students do miss their friends, do miss their teachers, do miss their school corridors and their playgrounds. And also now, when parents have been, have been forced to double up as educators, take active interest in online classes, etc., the realization that schools are safe places where children can spend their time, where parents or guardians are working, is more and more sinking in. Now, the goal of having children attend schools in person. Now, there's a question here. Reopening of schools will only be safe when the spread of virus is under control. There's no denying the fact, right? And then when is it possible to reopen a school for in-person learning? A layered approach is definitely needed to not only keep students, but also teachers and staff safe. Now, the time to start planning for skill, school reopen, reopening is now. So we have, been, we have been going to newspaper reports. We understand that in sooner, very soon and in various places around the world, we have seen schools reopening, we have seen the effect and we all look forward to it. Now, I've been very keenly following global developments. UNESCO, for instance, have been regularly organizing various sessions with educators, policymakers from across the globe to discuss effective strategies to anticipate and prepare for this critical transition. And also sharing very, very important lessons from past crises. Although the, the magnitude of this crisis is unprecedented, but there have been past instances as well. Might be of a lesser magnitude, but those are also being shared. The health, safety, and overall well being of students and entire education community was the central concern expressed by all stakeholders in these sessions. And some global best practices were shared. Key questions revolved around timing, conditions, and processes for school reopening. Now, according to the director of the Division of Policies and Lifelong Learning, Mr. Chakron. He underlined that ministries of education around the world, right, need to anticipate and prepare for the reopening of schools and start planning for it as soon as possible. Now, UNESCO also emphasized that if it's too early, then public health is in danger. And if it's longer than necessary, learning loss will continue to aggravate, especially for the most vulnerable. Now here, UNESCO has highlighted that during this 
pandemic, how the learning gap has increased and how there is a direct correlation in terms of learning gap and income inequalities around the world. Now he added that this will be determined based on the status and evolution of the pandemic. Of course, case to case, depending on advice from health authorities in each country. Now, there's a broad consensus that the first priority is to safeguard the life and well-being of population. Parents, teachers, and school communities need first and foremost to know that the school system can protect the overall health and well-being of the entire school population. So that confidence has to come in. And when we say health, when we mention health, not only physical, but also mental health, and also to ensure continuity of learning. Now, the framework for reopening of schools and I've seen UNESCO, UNICEF, World Bank being involved in framing this. And this provides guidance to help national and local authorities make their decision on why, when, and how. Now there are three important questions. Why, when, and how to reopen learning establishments. Now this framework was presented by Chief of Education at UNICEF, Mr. Robert Jenkins. And he stressed that the decision to reopen school is context specific and depends on the capacity of the school system to mitigate risks as well as community-based factors. Recalling that schools offer a wide range of vital services. Now, apart from education, also services like health and nutrition. For instance, midday meals, one of the largest programs in the world that we see in our country, across government schools. Now in all cases, we should be inspired to open better schools and leverage this process to improve quality with a focus on the most vulnerable who must be proactively reached. Now, the importance of consultation, communication, and coordination within the schooling community, as well as with other stakeholders like parents, to build trust, reassure parents of the safety of schools, and coordinate among various stakeholders. Now, this is really important. UNESCO identified at least three conditions for reopening of schools. Now these three conditions, first and foremost, physical protection, including safe hygiene conditions. Second, availability of school personnel, especially teachers. And third, capacity of the local administration and institution to implement changes such as remedial action, accelerated learning strategies and double shift schooling in some cases. Now, come to the last part of the discussion, double shift schooling. Incidentally, not only in terms of schooling, but of late, there'll be a lot of discussion around the world in terms of approach with regard to people getting back to work, with regard to institutions because by and large till now a lot of people have been working from home now various industries like manufacturing people need to get back to work right they need to get back to their factories their shop floors and sweat it out so that does listening to a very interesting discussion by one of the most renowned global health experts and he advocated this concept of double shift schooling, as well as increased working hours in offices and factories. Now he elaborated on a concept of four by 14, like meaning to say four working days in two weeks. 
So four days out of 14, 14 days, four days of work and 10 days at home. The entire concept revolved around the fact that anybody who unfortunately gets infected will show signs of that infection within those two weeks, within those 10, 11 days. Hence, it prevents them from coming back to work and infecting more people. Hence, this double shift schooling has also been elaborated in UNESCO's guideline. Now, around the world, we see various case studies. Denmark, for instance, the first European country to reopen schools. Now, there's a concrete example of how the decision was taken. First and foremost, they got a go ahead from health authorities. Now, they were in a good position because spread of virus was not that rampant, running a less violent course, I'll say. Ministry of Education started with gradual reopening of initially daycare and primary schools and held extensive consultations with all relevant stakeholders. And they also published guidelines with very, very specific and well-defined criteria regarding hygiene and social distancing. Opened up a hotline and dedicated website with questions and answers updated daily. Now, I believe the key to ensure successful reopening of schools is to take everyone on board, to take everyone on con con into, into, into confidence. So a lot of discussions and dialogue is needed involving all stakeholders, especially parents. Because it's a mutual responsibility. I'm sure schools will do their best. Our esteemed educators will go out of the way to protect children, to protect their staff, to protect themselves. But still, parents also have a huge role in this. Now from Denmark, if we come to Asia, South Korea, for instance. Now, South Korea, for instance, is still reluctant to allow students to go back to school and prefer online learning. Now, in fact, it's very interesting. The ministry, education ministry in South Korea went for the online school year. So the entire year has been defined as the online school year. Now, director of the International Education Division, Ms. Su Jin Choi, attributes the success of this measure to teachers' commitment and ICT skills as well as public-private partnerships, including with telecom companies. Now, the decision to physically open schools in South Korea, now, so they have gone for a very detailed consultation with epidemiologists, teachers, parents, school administrators, as well as they are conducting various nationwide mock drills. Now, from Asia, if you go to South America and Mexico, for instance, school reopening is planned in two phases. During first phase, only schools in risk-free municipalities will open in gradual manner, while the rest of the schools will open in the second phase. The school year has been extended across Mexico by two weeks. And once students return to school, emphasis will be placed first on socio-emotional support before moving to academic content. So mental health is a priority, counseling is a priority, hand-holding is a priority, and then obviously academics come in based on relevant assessments and after prioritizing health of students. Now, we discussed about lessons from the past. For instance, in Sierra Leone, the ministry says that this is not the first time that we're dealing with the epidemic. And because of experience, they have not panicked. Because they are applying the same strategies, same strategies 
as during the Ebola crisis, which included protocols of sanitary measures for school, psychosocial support for teachers, school fees being waived off, provision of increased provision of meals, wider social mobilization, engagement of community leaders, civil society organizations. So everybody coming in, everybody contributing to this journey. Now, these measures significantly helped in reducing school dropout. And it, it, it's wonderful to know that during Ebola, no child was infected in schools. On the contrary, they helped disseminate health messages among their families. So in developing nations, in areas where help is needed most, these children, they played a wonderful part as messengers. And they really helped spread health messages among their families and communities. Thus, we were discussing about the approach of UNESCO. And they have concluded by saying that it's a complex and highly sensitive issue, which requires the preparedness of the education system from infrastructure and pedagogical process to teaching staff, students, and parents. So each and every stakeholder is equally important. Now, coming to what schools can do, I'm sure they'll be elaborate and appropriate guidelines, which will advocate a number of steps that I'm sure schools will take to prevent the spread of the virus. And considering the fact that we have been during last last few months, awareness has increased drastically on concepts like physical distancing, hand hygiene, masks, but still simple things like, for instance, allowing students to eat lunches in their desks or in small group instead of crowded lunch rooms, leaving classroom doors open to help reduce touch surfaces such as door knobs. It play huge roles. Now, I think parents also have a huge role to play in terms of, in terms of regular monitoring, testing, temperature checks. Now, on their part, I'm sure schools will frequently remind students, teachers, and staff to stay home if they have any signs of illness. If there are instances of exposures, any, although. See, evidence around the world has suggested that children younger than 10 years are less likely to be infected. And that's how statistics has been. But still, schools need to plan for exposures. For instance, quarantine guidelines for any student or staff member who have come in close contact with someone who is known to be infected. Again, moving on, Issues like cleaning, disinfecting, ensuring that there's no crowding in common areas. Now, suppose outdoor activities in smaller groups. Another very important aspect is commuting to school. Now, this is really critical. You know, school buses, commuting to schools. I'm sure a lot of thought has to go into this in terms of assigning seats, making masks mandatory, if possible, encouraging students to avail private transport. Now, in spite of all measures being taken by schools and duly implemented, we cannot deny the fact that risk still exists. Thus, students with high risk medical conditions may need to have case to case discussions with physicians and school authorities. Another very, really, I'll say, sensitive topic is children who are specially abled. Now, the impact of schools being closed 
may have been far greater for students with disabilities. And they have a more difficult time transitioning back to schools after missing out on instruction, as well as school-based services, such as occupational, physical, and speech language therapy and mental health support counseling. I'm sure schools will review the needs of each child with individual education program before they return to school. Now, again, next aspect, which is really critical is behavioral health and emotional support. You know, in fact, we at Notebook, when we started this entire Together for Education webinar series, and today we are in the 47th episode, our prime focus has been on the software issues. See, as far as, as far as teaching methodologies are concerned, our esteemed educators with decades of experience are already doing a phenomenal job. And I'm sure that we can discuss, we can exchange views, but they are champions in their own right. So where we wanted to really come in, discuss, share our thoughts is with regard to software issues, emotional support, behavioral support, and not only for children, but for all stakeholders. This has been a testing time. This has been a critical time. And especially now we see the other devastating effects of the pandemic, like economic uncertainties and other aspects coming in. Thus, you know, behavioral health, emotional support plays a huge role, especially for students struggling with stress and anyone showing signs of anxiety, distress. So it's really important to deal with these things on a case by case basis, reach out. Now, this process of schools reopening will require everyone's support. This will really require everyone's support to make sure that it's healthy, safe, and equitable for students, teachers, staff, and families. I thank each one of you for giving me a patient hearing and considering how important today's topic is for each one of us and for so many children who are missing out, who are missing out, listening to their favorite teachers, playing with their friends. I really look forward to the views of the esteemed panel. Thank you. Over to you, Shuvai. Thank you so much, Achin. Thank you for that wonderful presentation. I think this really sets the stage for the panel discussion that is going to follow. And it is now my privilege to introduce the panel to you. Ladies and gentlemen, we have uh, three panelists with us today. Unfortunately, Dr. Murli could not join us for today's session. I would uh, request the panelists to please uh, switch on their cameras as I introduce them. We have with us today, Ma'am Veena S.A., who's the principal of the Ideal Java, Java Rotary School in Mysore. Veena Ma'am has a teaching experience of 20 years where she's taught biology, microbiology, and environmental education. She holds an MPhil in microbiology, an MSc in microbiology, and a DBA diploma in business administration from ICFI. She's, she's been the headmistress and the academic coordinator in charge of college section, that is IESC class 9th and 12th and PUC. She's attended various orientation programs, starting with a four-day orientation conducted by Pearson schools for principals from India and Nepal in Hyderabad, and edXL training, student counseling and career guidance, national conference on emerging trends and future challenges in biotechnology, participated in young student movement for three years and special training programs for student leaders organized by the movement. She's conducted a workshop on genomics and proteomics tools and applications. She's been part of the state level seminar on biotechnology and human welfare and a symposium on role of microbiology in biotechnology and a conference on didactics. Ma'am, we are privileged to have you with us today. 
We also have with us Dr. Sangeeta Arora, who's the principal of the K R Mangalam World School, G K to New Delhi. She has more than 27 years of experience in the field of education and alumnus of Andhra School, New Delhi. Dr. Arora completed her graduation and master's in mathematics honors from Delhi University, and then went on to complete her M Phil and PhD from Jamia Millia Islamia, New Delhi. A natural leader and a motivated learner, Dr. Arora continuously strives to keep abreast of the latest research in the field of education in general and mathematics in particular. She has been associated with NCERT, CBSC, and you know, in various capacities and has authored numerous papers and books on secondary school mathematics. She has also been a pillar in community service and has contributed immensely towards various literacy campaigns. A spontaneous person with a disarming sense of humor, she loves the outdoors and adventure. And as the principal of a school, she leads a galaxy of educators with her indefatigable passion and zeal in imparting contemporary education to the students while keeping them rooted in Indian values. Ma'am, privileged to have you with us. We also have with us Dr. Ranjan Roy, who's the principal of the Dayavati Modi Academy in Varanasi. He's an MA economics, BA and a PhD economics with a vast experience of over 20 years in education. He started as a PGT in economics and has been a housemaster, hostel in charge and vice principal. He has worked in Chaman Vatika Residential Public School Ambala as vice principal for over six years before taking over as principal of the same school. He took over as the principal of the Dayavati Modi Academy Varanasi in 2008. He's the president of the Varanasi Sahodaya School Complex Forum of CBSE School Principals for the last eight years. He has been part of the school management committee member of few reputed schools, including DPS, Sunbeam English School, Imperial Public School, and Jeevandi Public Schools, all in Varanasi. He had been felicitated by Rotary Club Varanasi and Avantika, a group of artists and intellectuals in New Delhi. He has been associated with the ICSC New Delhi as convener, inspector of schools, and as assistant examiner, ISC. He has been on the affiliation inspection team of CBSC, center superintendent of JEE Mains, NEET, UGC NET, and CTET, and also a member of the Flying Squad of CBSC. He's received appreciation letters in the year 2014 from CBSC, and for two consecutive years in 2014 and 15 from Ministry of HRD. Two years ago, Sri Anurag Tripathi, Secretary CBSC, had conferred Mahamana Pandit Madan Mohan Malviya Samman to Dr. Roy in the presence of Dean Faculty of Education, BHU, for his contribution in the field of school education. He's also the impanel resource person for training program of Center of Excellence, CBSC Prayagraj. Dr. Roy is a dynamic person, always eager to learn and innovate, and is also the city coordinator of Varanasi Center of CTET, CBSC. Sir, privileged to have you with us. I will now stop my share and invite all the panelists to start the discussion. Uh, Dr. Roy, for some reason, I can't see your uh, video. Yes, I have all the panelists here with me. I will first go around the table for your opening remarks. Uh, you know, we are dealing with a very, very interesting and important topic today. Uh, Veena, ma'am, if we may start with you. Yeah. Uh, thanks, uh, Shubayu, for that uh, wonderful introduction. And uh, the topic, reopening of schools. When you say reopening of schools, what comes to each one's mind? If it is students or children, they are so excited that new books, new uniform, new classroom, new class teacher, then meeting school friends after long holiday, well-decorated classroom as they walk into the class with a different theme. And there is always a surprise for them as a takeaways, a small art piece done by their class teachers. So this is what comes to a child's mind when we say reopening of schools. Same with the teachers too. They will be waiting for the new batch of students to walk in, interact with them, understand and uh, create some group activity for them. And they give them small gifts as wishes and blessing for the academic, academic year. When it comes to parents, when you say re reopening of schools, they have a checklist to keep things ready to send their children to the school and a lot of expectation and hope that the child does good that academic year and there is good improvement in the child. 
but today if i say reopening of school will we get the same feeling irrespective it is a child teacher principal management no even today as if i remember my school days and say reopening of school i i still cherish those memories and we had a gala time enjoying the first day was always special but the scenario has completely changed there is a lot of confusion confusion question mark and doubts regarding the reopening of schools so nothing is same as how we it used to be and we have to reorganize ourselves to the new normal what are the things we have to look into when we say reopening of schools probably the timings the time the child spends in the school might change the strength of the classroom will change and probably we'll have to work in batches and shifts the movement of children in the school change which is very disheartening where i have to tell a child you move this way you come this way you sit here because they would be in such a uh, spirit of that carefree life so the movement of the children in the school will change and maintaining social distance with small kids is a big challenge and it will be a real taxing for the teachers and the students and it will definitely affect them emotionally so we will have to be prepared to deal with not only the physical structure of school the safety the security the hygiene we will have to deal with their emotional and psychological need also for this the role of the teachers parents students and all the stakeholders all associated with school their roles will definitely change and every step we need hand holding and a good orientation program for each one of them to understand the present scenario the new normal what we call so that there is that safe reopening and we start off and coming to the technology what we used to use uh, in school we will have to revamp the entire system entire system so because it's the conditions is completely changed and we have to adapt so the re reopening which used to bring that excitement happiness and the good memories has changed into something else but nevertheless we can always go for precaution not panic with this i close my opening remark thank you thank you so much ma'am uh, dr arora if i may come to you next uh, your initial thoughts about the topic today ma'am i think you're on mute Uh, thank you so much, Mrs. Subhayu, and thank you, Mr. Um, Achin Bhattacharya. I know the whole notebook team for giving me this opportunity to learn and uh, share my thoughts with this uh, esteemed academy. Uh, we all know this COVID-19 situation has uh, played a havoc on the life of many people, and uh, no one is uh, left out uh, untouched. But this has also helped. the school uh and the individuals to be a good learner you know we all have to uh re revamp ourselves we have to the schools needs to rethink they have to you know redesign and uh, you know, re evolve as the teaching learning centers and as an individual we all have to be on our feet to learn and to to survive and thrive you know and because of this after this is during covid 19 situation we know most of the schools within 3 days 4 days 1 week 2 week or uh, the 10 days they all went on online without any planning and we all learnt it but after covid 19 situation after pandemic when the schools is going to reopen we again have to reevolve and rethink about the same thing as a uh, we all have to work on right now as an autonomous learner what i think is the way ahead when the school will reopen there are two aspects uh, which already uh, mrs veena has already talked about one is a physical one another one is a mental well being now for the physical infrastructure i'm sure all the schools and the stakeholders like the government the school management the administrator that is a principal and the teachers will take care of it 
you know nobody is going to leave any un uh, stone unturned for the safety and security of the children what what i think is the most important thing is about the mental health being and emotional well being of the students the human factor which is being involved that is for the teachers and for the students because right now everybody is sitting remotely and that social content and mr achin bhattacharya says the school is not only about academics it is more about uh, you know the social interchange and right now that social interchange has to be with the new normal with the the, uh, the restriction the children are as such are very open people you know for in terms of the social this thing and we have to teach them how to interact now in a new way and when they come to the school this aspect what they have faced at their houses at their homes because there are many children who are really really affected by covid 19 situation and when they come back to the school the teachers the the parents and all elders have to be very very sensitive about it the second thing is about the duration of the school which miss miss this is veena also shared uh, for the younger children after one year i don't think the younger children will be coming well before the session has to be on the online as the things are turning out if we get the vaccine soon um, we may have the younger children coming back to the school but i don't see in that way as a situation is turning so these younger children for 6 hours they have to be in the school the transport they have all forgotten about it that the duration of the school has to be shorter now and we have to rethink about it the way they are sitting at home the way they were learning it this all has been changed so now i think this has to move on to blended learning uh, the social aspect has to be taken the first seat we don't have to think about academics that have will come later we first have to uh, teach our children how to be uh, safe how to be secure both mentally and physically and then take part to the academics uh, mr achin has given numerous example where the 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 session has been increased in mexico and he has given the other example and everybody is taking care of it and i'm sure we will also work on it so yes we have a long road ahead but as i said this covid 19 situation has helped in fact forced us to think in a very innovative manner i'm sure we will be able to handle it in a more productive manner thank you thank you so much ma'am uh, i think we we keep saying this and i cannot uh, you know overstate this if i say that the teaching community particularly the teachers have done a phenomenal job of completely reinventing the education process overnight in dealing with this pandemic yes. it's, it's been absolutely amazing to see uh, from the sidelines thank you so much ma'am dr roy if i can come to you next uh, first welcome back you were with us for an earlier session on leveling the playing field thank you thank you my job to welcome thank you so your thoughts uh, good evening uh, mr suvayu uh, the creative of today's webinar speaks volume the turning around and uh, just at the shade of that um, sorry for the interruption what is written and you have uh, nicely put it across what does it actually mean um, but you know for any kind of uh, work or mission to accomplish uh, there is a planning there is a planning stage and that planning stage comprises pre work on the spot work and of course post facto now these all three stages are uh, definitely would be successful one provided three pillars of the school that is uh, teacher student and school teach management if bonding among these three stakeholders are proper or it is uh, to some extent um, that basic minimum level of expectation is fulfilled then definitely we will be able to um, overcome the fear of failure and we will be able to uh, enjoy the success now you know our work at this point of time has to be very specific it has to be measurable it has to be of course achievable 
and it has to be reasonable and time bound so the acronym i can say that it is a kind of smart work we all have to do collectively and individually um collectively because of the fact you know we need to constitute a kind of a uh, special task force under the leadership of head of the school or manager of the school whosoever takes over with the assisting members from the faculty and rro roles and responsibility of this uh, special task force has to be clearly defined and after that we need to aware uh, and sensitize the all the stakeholders those who are associated with the school so we need to frame a committee for that matter we have to take care of medical emergency we we'll have to take care of mental health and well being we have to take care of hygiene and sanitation we have to see how all the protocols are uh, framed in the school and we can uh, well execute those uh, protocols and of course school so lot of expectation is there that we will be uh, going for academic restructuring and um, already cbsc has rationalized the syllabus school which are cbsc affiliated in the month of july uh, 30% of syllabus has been trimmed keeping the concept and um, importance or uh, critical concept of the chapters intact so that way we'll have to see all these of course i agree with my two other panelists uh, bina ma'am and uh, dr sangeeta arora um certain apprehensions they have already put across uh, especially sangeeta ma'am has mentioned that junior student uh, we have lot of uh, apprehension and doubt that whether they will be coming to school or they will be allowed by their parents or will be getting the consent from the parents to send them the school before we get vaccine so i do agree with them but as i told you that if uh, the bonding of three stakeholders of a school three pillars of a school is uh, strong enough then probably our work would be little easier than what we are otherwise are thinking so there we need to be um, uh, we need to execute our uh, specific task measurable task achievable task and uh, reasonable task within the time frame so i am quite optimistic although after uh, giving the google format for the consent of the parents uh, on an average here in baranasi we got 30% consent for 9th and 12th senior section but i hope that once parents are um, quite satisfied to see uh, what situation um, how smartly schools are able to tackle the adverse situation and how local administration is giving us the support after that probably with a kind of snowball effect today 30% is there maybe after 5 7 days others will also gain confidence and after that they may start sending their kids to the senior section of the school because as per up state government's uh, order we are supposed to start it from monday 19th uh, that uh, monday 19th of october so we all are ready that way and even uh, local administration has conducted a meeting given lot of uh, guidelines lot of uh, restrictions which we all need to follow and shift wise we need to uh, call the children uh, in the school 9th and 10th in one shift and then with a gap uh, 11th and 12th so we all are following those we have chalked out all these um, structural framework and after that we are going to follow all those so i hope um, it would be um, a beginning Uh, but slowly and gradually we will be definitely able to come up to the expectation of the society and definitely um dar ki aage jeet hai or that sort of situation we will over will be able to overcome the fear of our failure and we'll definitely shoulder the responsibility collectively thank you thank you so much sir you said 19th of october that's day after tomorrow um 19th of october monday day after tomorrow Okay, wow. We are in UP. We have got the order, and this is pan UP. Uh, any city, any town would be the same date, uh, unless it is a containment zone. Okay. Uh, uh, all those areas in UP, uh, government has given. Delhi is after thirty-first October. Delhi after thirty-first, and uh, Binabam, what about Mysore? 
Karnataka, Karnataka, we have not yet received any um, dates yet for reopening. I mean, they are planning, but uh, no dates declared yet. All right. Uh, Ma'am, my next question is also to you. Uh, as you know, schools will undergo quite a change in terms of number of students, the way it's taught, the curriculum design, etc. What are the, some of the major adaptations that you see schools will have to undertake when you reopen after this lockdown? See, uh, this uh, real change happens when there is a deep crisis. It has happened during the process of evolution also. The species which could adapt to the changing environment could only survive and the survival of the fittest theory came. Now, we have seen three different kinds of world in a very short duration, uh, that is pre-corona, during corona, and now the challenge is post-corona. After pandemic, what do we do? Adaptations uh, sometimes happen unknowingly just to make our survival better. But sometimes we have to do deliberate efforts to adapt to this existing condition. So how do we adapt? I would like to speak under different headings. First, I would like to speak the technology part of it. Now, pre-corona technology was used in, in the form of resource. Maybe it is in the form of smart boards, uh, then uh, science lab, robotics lab, and 3D labs. Technology was more of knowledge pool where we, we would take the aid of this technology and we would conduct classes. But during corona, what happened is suddenly lockdown and we were all stuck in our respective places and we started conducting online classes. It was more of connecting to the students stationed elsewhere other than school, trying to connect with them so that some amount of academics could happen. Somehow we could talk to them and they would feel that they are there with the school teachers and their classmates. Now post Corona, what will be the condition and what how much technology we can bring into our system. There might be a possibility that we will never have that kind of physical school how it was pre-corona. Nine to four schools after four o'clock, hobby classes, sports training. Probably we will have to redesign the whole system. So I feel the knowledge will be disseminated or teaching learning will happen through hybrid mode. Now, when we tell, uh, when we say hybrid mode, the learning will happen, teaching and learning will happen. It will happen in school. It will happen at home. Now, once during uh, Corona, what uh, happened when we started online classes, we had synchronous class, that is live class through some platform. We had asynchronous classes, the recorded videos of uh, the teachers would be sent to the students and uh, the, the things continued. But Post-corona, probably we will have to have all the three, that is synchronous, asynchronous, and physical schooling. So the learning will happen at school and at home as well. And it all depends how effective it is going to go. It depends on how well we adapt to it. One thing for sure, this will definitely change the way we live and changes as a species. And the change is going to take at the species level, probably because of my biology background, I've used this species thing. Now, what happens with the parents and the way we connect to the parents and the communication? Because every school would have PTM, that is parents teachers meeting, and the whole uh, school would be like a festive mode, all parents walking in, talking to the teachers. I think in near few future, we, can, future we, we cannot think of such a meeting at all. So what would be the feedback duration we would give? We would give once in uh, two months, that is, or two PTMs, Per term. So the parents would come look at the mascot and they would go home seeing the grades. But now with this post corona, I think the feedback has to be given on a day to day basis. Why parents need to get day to day basis because parents will take up the role of the facilitator, the mentor, and they will guide the students to study at home. So some part of the teacher's role will be passed on to the parents. So it is very important how do we how we communicate to parents and how we orient them. Now, the third thing what we have to uh, importantly involve in school is health and social protection agency. 
but i will not go into the details of it because here the overall uh, idea of uh, what i'm sharing is completely focused on academics so the next uh, heading what i want to bring in here is add on to school program since the child is spending very less time in the school probably we will not be able to give this uh, sports the communication classes the co curricular activities extra curricular activities promote their hobbies or whatever programs each school had i don't think it is possible for another one or two years don't know still it is a question mark so there will be there on a lot of add on school programs coming into life where they will come supplement and complement the schooling process and it is very important that parents give that to the children because school will focus only on academics for some time now coming to students very important we are all there we are existing in school because of students here i'll be speaking only focusing the academics i will not take the emotional and psychological aspect of it now all these days i can say most of the teaching and learning was more of flex like spoon feeding even in 10 standard dictation of notes used to happen but i think the children have to adapt to the new ways of learning they have to take the ownership of their own learning they should know how to learn what support and how much support they need and they can expect from each person associated with them that is how much support to expect from the parents and the teachers they need to personalize personalize their learning and when sd rule becomes their socializing will affect and the children are distanced and separated from their friends which is definitely going to affect them there the student counselor or the mentor will play a major role coming to teachers teachers have shown that adaptation best example i can take in the whole uh, this thing is teachers because in one month everybody adapted understood different apps different tools present in the internet tried out all possible thing earlier they were just knowledge disseminators now probably they have got into the technology so much and they are doing it but still we need to streamline the whole process so what do we i will end saying that the role of parents teachers and students is completely changed sooner we understand and adapt it will be very good and definitely there is there will be a buffering period for transition to happen they have to come back from home to school now and from there they have to get into hybrid mode where they will be learning at home in school and sometimes we don't know probably a combination of it so these are the major adaptation which i focused mainly with keeping academics in concern thank you thank you so much ma'am uh, if i may come to uh, dr arora ma'am uh, i'm sure you have very similar adaptations in mind anything specific that you might want to add to what veena ma'am just discussed um for this adaptation i would just for like to uh, share uh, my screen if you just give me a moment come on are you able to see just have to give me a yes, thumbs up to see your screen yes so you see when we are looking at it uh, the adaptation just saying it this is what i have just thought of health and safety aspects learning with physical and social distances academic aspects emotional well being of students and teachers yes we all have to think about it and this is the guideline that we have received from the cbse and we have received from the doe directorate of education to now when we look at health and safety aspects we have to make sops the the things that she is talking about about the, uh, the adaptation that we have to make we have to make another standard operating procedure before opening and after opening and we also have to look up at the canteen cafeteria we know in the government schools as a mid day meal which is there the first water facility and the management of waste everything everything has to be adapted again we have to rethink in terms of this pandemic now learning with physical and social distancing now here we have to develop the alternative annual calendar of school activity which ncert has already shared it with us and we are following it up but we have to rethink about it and now the focus has to be on the learning outcome and not on the content now we have to create learner friendly school and classroom environment 
that is also has to be there because now the crowd has to be less and we really have to think about it how to maintain that social distancing in the classroom now ensuring transition from home based schooling to formal schooling this is very important which i talked about in my opening uh, remark also how they were going to come back because they are coming after 6 months uh, and some of the younger students will be coming after uh, say one year and uh, emotion and ensuring emotional well being of students and teacher this is very important this is not about the students this is also about the teachers and developing checklist for the safe school environment and capacity building of all stakeholders this is the important thing and which needs to be done and we are doing it at our school having this orientation with the parents with the students with the teachers because everybody is involved over here and even the our uh, school management committee members everybody has to be reoriented again and again for this because it re it requires uh, the cooperation and collaboration of all stakeholders even the government agencies and this adaptation cannot be thought of and it will be different from different region to different school as the pandemic as the pandemic is prevalent in different uh, cities in a different way and the clientele is different the way of thinking is different the socio cultural background is different so it has to be with that particular school or with that particular area to think about it now the school head if i have to think about it when i start thinking about it this is what is the school head has to do academic calendar for online offline and blended learning because it cannot go on with the online it cannot go on with the offline and it, it has to be a blended learning and i've seen it in question and answer one of, uh, one of the uh, the person has commented over there i'm just forgetting the name and he said it is very they have already started with the the schooling and the the, the number of students are coming they're very less in a single digit but uh, and if we reduce the hours the fees will also reduce now this is uh, a catch situation for all the schools we have to think about it when we get as uh, mr roy has already mentioned they have done a google uh, survey with their parents and we have also done it only 40% of the parents have said only for the senior school i don't think junior school uh, parents are going to do that all these things the assessment and examination plan develop community channels developing and assigning duties to teacher with sop and expectation because now duties will change of the teach of the safety and security is not about the academics it's not about the examination it will be something else also and helping marginalized children that is especially able children we do have them in our school we have to think how to work with them because there has to be social distancing and they need a different kind of a, a teaching environment again maintaining cleanliness and hygiene awareness sensitization of teachers and other staff taking care of emotional and mental health development of it infrastructure and resources now this has become a a very important thing in our uh, in the school because right now we we were doing it in a very slow pace now it has to be the focus the teachers they have to also have to change many of the teachers now they have to learn this overnight this uh, online teaching tools and uh, notebook is one of it and everybody has to learn it because they were earlier the teachers they were fence sitters sitters they never wanted to learn they were thinking why we have to do it now it becomes a reality which is a need of them they have to focus on learning outcomes instead of on content and they have to do this comprehensive plan for their respective class and subject in which will change because they have to use resources they have to use blended learning and they have to take care of emotional and mental health of the children which earlier yes they were doing it but now the focus will be more because the situation at home is different e content and e textbooks they all have to aware about it they have to focus on a continuous professional development because the world is changing very fast earlier we used to say the education scenario is the same what it has been 25 30 years before now in within this covid 19 situation it has changed so drastically now the teachers have to learn it parents in another stakeholder they have to ensure about all if these I may, things if i may interrupt you for a second on that point of e learning uh, the gentleman who had uh, posted that earlier comment was uh, mr roy de silva mr de silva is the principal of the saint stephen school in togan chandigarh and he has just uh, commented back saying uh, because of the current situation right now parents particularly of the many preschool and primary school children are doing a lot of the teaching themselves in addition to paying the fees as well yes 
students and parents have embraced online learning over the past half year now perhaps online learning is not only the preferred mode but the only mode that should continue for the rest of the year he says that's his uh, thing yes i uh, yes these are statistics and i do understand it and uh, that's what i say that we have to go on to the blended learning if the government is going to say take the consent of the parent if they will not allow the students to come to the school then we have to go on to these things and if, if there are single digit uh, students are coming to the school you have to work with them and the government is saying call them up for 4 hours or 3 hours or 2 hours this is what doe has been talking about it actually in delhi we didn't get any comprehensive plan for this but this is there is a discussion about and we have to go ahead with that again we have to rethink this is what i'm saying this adaptation has to be very dynamic we just can't say it right now how the situation is going to develop we have to move on to that and yes we have to bring in parents over here because they will become as mrs veena uh, has already talked about it that we have to bring parents with us they have to be a uh, one part of a uh, they are the teachers at home even the education minister is saying now with the responsibility is on the parents and the adoption of technology now this is one thing that we need to work on the focus has to be on blended learning on co synchronous and asynchronous learning and a learning model that we have to develop will which has to combine both formal traditional classroom and non formal online classroom methodology and we need to work on it and it will take time and we are working on it and yes every school is working as per the clientele that they have and um, it it will differ from school to school and some of the things will remain the same now here the key benefits that i am uh, i would like to say about the blended learning is this is cost efficient the the reduced traveling cost will be there from the teacher side and also from the student side and yes school has to re evolve what they were before covid 19 situation it will not be the same it is the reality and yes uh, the fees factor the infrastructure factor the way we have been thinking before yes it has to be changed and how it has to be changed will differ there will be a general consensus but we will get a guideline from the government also but it will change whether we like it or we don't like it it will definitely change because now the content is there everywhere now you know it for the publisher there is there's a havoc with the publisher because everywhere the e textbooks now are available the e content is always available now they that the industry also have to adapt themselves and we also have to do it in the similar way we just can't say we have to give the physical books in physical thing and uh, uh but this a uh, blended learning will definitely will help us in these three things now how to do this blended learning with five easy steps choose a suitable learning system adaptation if we want to do it communicate the blended learning objectives with the parents create a flexible blended learning strategy include effective assessment in the program and the last one is build a blended learning community now this is one of the adaptation we have to use when we are using our technological aspect in our school now these are some of the online learning platforms there are many i have used these and i'm aware of these so i have written these this is coursera uh free and paid courses definitely is there now we in the school what we are teaching we don't have, we can't say that we are the only one who can teach we can you know outsource these kind of a courses but how we have to do it how we have to make our academic plan that has to uh, be redeveloped linkedin it is also there ujemi is there skillshare is there edx is there this is open and uh, open you know free and open source for the courses that we can get now these are the other different online learning, learning platforms this is learn words where we can create our own our teachers can create it think of it teachable kazabi with iq all these we can create our own courses and schools have to think about it right now after 6 months but they have it has to be there because when we say we have to offer a blended learning to our uh, parents and students cannot come back to the school or they are coming for lesser hours then we have to um, redefine ourselves and justify our 
different online learning platform another one moodle moodle i have already used it it's very good blackboard i spring learn ma'am i'm really sorry to have to interrupt you uh, if you want we can share your presentation with people who are in attendance but i would really yeah. want to work across to the other participants to so that i can get yeah. comments on a few things okay i just want to uh, uh, conclude here with the just one thing that a school without a boundary and time constraint is the future school how and when in how we have to adapt how we have to go uh, through this we have to rethink about it and yes possibilities and opportunities are there we have to be positive about it and develop our school as a future school of the world thank you so much thank you so much ma'am and uh, again if you want we can uh, share your presentation with others because there are some very very important points in there i think a lot of takeaways for all our attendees uh, dr roy if i may come to you next thank you ma'am uh, dr roy if i may come to you uh, you are less than 48 hours away from reopening your school and the sops that people have spoken about i'm sure you would have developed some kind of an sop for <laughs> what is going to happen on monday morning if you would like to share some points of your school's sop with us dr roy are you there dr roy abhishek could you please check if uh, dr roy is uh, facing any technical i'm on it i'm on it vina ma'am if i may come to you uh, we all know that the roles are going to change tremendously as dr roda was just saying the amount of education that will happen online is going to increase tremendously uh when you when you see that these classes are going to reopen only a set of that classroom are going to be sitting inside the classroom and there's going to be a set of students outside the classroom do you think you are going to use online interfaces like zoom or meet or whichever to have them simultaneously attend the live class or is will will teachers be repeating their classes uh, see uh, when we reopen uh, the challenges are uh, in case if there is any containment zone if some from some area if uh, now as of now uh, in some states they have given permission for 9th and 10th then 11th and 12th of course we have till 10 9th and 10th but what happens is 9th and 10th when they give in case if there is any containment zone a child coming from the containment zone cannot attend the class there is a possibility that few children on rotation will miss the classes for various reasons so what we have done already we have done as we have a, a resource pool of recorded sessions from grade 1 to grade 10 every chapter is recorded by the subject teacher and it is a, it is maintained in a well structured manner so if a child misses the classes classes the sessions will be shared in the form of recorded uh, mode and uh, because uh, once we reopen only we will know what are the technological changes we are going to do probably if we can give the same uh, thing whatever is happening inside the classroom as a online uh, class it will be good see there are some uh, inputs from people like we have to continue online for another year or two or for six months okay fine online classes are going good asynchronous classes are going good no problem but uh, nothing to compensate that physical school where children come and they bond with their classmates and the teachers uh, no technology can bring that joy of learning so we are prepared for both giving online classes and uh, asynchronous classes so depending upon the situation probably we will take decision we are already ready for that uh, thing but in karnataka we have not decided when to open the reopen the schools right uh dr arora in delhi uh given the delhi government themselves run so many schools and the schools you have said reopening on 31st of october right no they uh, we got this kind of a thing till 31st of october the schools will be closed and then they usually give one day before um uh, how the things will uh, will be going on but there is a discussion if it will be reopen it will be reopen uh for uh, after taking the consent and few students will be called up to uh, 
you know, uh, clear out their doubts, in, especially in class 10th and 12th. But we still have to get this kind of uh, no feedback from the government right okay. now till 31st of october all schools are closed for schools so ma'am both in your school as well as in mysore uh, have you already conducted a survey of how many parents are willing to send their students back to school i have done it in my school and 40% uh, of the parents have agreed and that is for 9 to 12 only uh, uh, to send their children to the school uh, we are yet to conduct the survey because uh, the reopening dates are not given. But already we have got instructions from any time we decide to reopen, we will have to send a consent form to the parents and take the percentage and decide how we are going to go about the sessions or the classes. So we have not yet taken the consent letter, but some schools have done some survey. I have been talking to some principals, uh, very similar percentage has come like 35 to 40 percent uh, parents are willing to send uh, to schools. And this is going to be very interesting that right now when nobody's going to school for a parent it's perhaps much easier to sit back and say no I won't send but when the student sees their friend going to a classroom the situation might change considerably. Yes yes uh, it's, I, I feel it's like little uh, we cannot predict what will be the decision, the outcomes uh, of the whole process of reopening? Uh, probably it depends on the vaccine and the number of cases in that particular area and how confident the parent is about the whole uh, stringent process, what you're going to take in the school for the safety and hygiene of students. Right. Uh, earlier when Veena was talking about the adaptation, she focused more on the curricular bit. Uh, I was hoping that Dr. Roy could join us back. Uh, Abhishek, any luck? He's having some connectivity issues. He can hear us, okay. uh, but he can't. He's not able to connect his, uh, you know, speaking no worries, uh, device. Uh, Doctor Roda, I'm sure your school has already a counselor, etc. Any inputs from that side? That what about the emotional well-being of the students? I mean, if I had to, when when we first reopened our offices here in Calcutta, it was a shocking sight for us being adults walking into an office building where you would wait for, you know, a lift to be empty enough to climb onto, to suddenly seeing a third of the building just not be there. I, I cannot imagine how it will be for students. Um, it will be very difficult for them uh, to come to the school and uh, they're very, uh, the students who are, uh, because there are some of my students, class 12 students who have visited with their parents to the school to you know, they're applying um, you know, outside uh, for the abroad universities and they're coming here for uh, the predicting mass. And when they come to the school, the way they look at the ground, the way they look at the building, uh, you know, you can see that kind of a longingness in their eyes and they say, ma'am, please call us back. Uh, we want to come back to the school. Uh, the Earlier, we used to say that we don't want to get up and we don't want to go to the school. Now, we want to come back. Please call us back. If you allow, can we take a round of the school? So, this is the kind of, uh, you know, emotional, uh, 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 the bonding and the emotional, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, response that I'm getting from the uh, from the, my children. And when I, I'm, I go to the school every day and I'm there in the principal office and believe me and Mrs. Zwina will also agree with me and all the teacher community will agree. The school is, uh, is soulless. You know, without student, it is soulless. And uh, yes, I do agree. Um, nothing can, you know, you know uh, replace that physical bonding uh, with the student there their laughter in the corridor, their uh, the chubbiness, their synergy, and with the, the way with the way they smile at you, and uh, the way that uh, their body uh, language when you talk to them and when you look at them, their brighter faces, nothing can replace it. But uh, uh, having said that, we have to continue. If the situation is different, we have to uh, work in a different way. And uh, I do think about my nursery student, they have never ever set up their foot in the classroom. And, uh, and how we are bonding with them, they don't know the physical school. They, they were admitted and uh, COVID-19 situation happened. 
so but this online classes has really helped in a way um, uh, 30 for 30 minutes or 40 minutes that they are meeting with the teachers with the students at least they are, they come to know so something is better than the nothing no i i would say that so uh, yes as an elder you were feeling so bad about it yes for the students when they come back to the school they would like to what about the students talk about the teachers when i call them up i have to tell them please maintain social distance because they want to hug each other that emotional thing that they were missing they wanted to talk to each other so we called them for registration we needed them for some official work so uh, this is about everyone we are uh, social beings we are emotional beings so this will will be something we have to work on and we have to do that orientation with the counselors and talk about it and yes we have to we cannot call the whole strength to the school simply cannot Uh, the classroom is meant for thirty students, and how we can allow them with the social distancing? So, I don't know how it will work out, as Mrs. Reena says. But uh, let let's see. It's a very few dynamic situation. But I'm hoping for the best. I'm hoping for the best. And yes, we will be able to uh, work it out as we worked it out in COVID nineteen situation during that in the month of March and April. We have done everything online. I'm doing assemblies online. I'm doing report cards online. I'm doing functions online. Everything online. We have worked it out, and we are sending videos for all co-curricular activities. All the things we are doing it, but yes, we do miss our children, and yes, they do miss the school. That physical aspect we can't take it on. Sorry, ma'am. Ah, uh, Bina, ma'am. Uh, just looking at our biology input, ah, uh, we see all, we saw examples of Mexico, South Korea, everywhere. They are saying that students younger than ten years of age are less susceptible to the virus. and they are the first ones being led back into school whereas here because of our closeness to board exams we are starting with classes 9 to 12 what's the logic uh students below 12 years is uh, they are less uh, susceptible to this uh, infections and uh, uh, symptoms because the immune system is very strong generally taking that everybody's health and the system is good the immune system is very strong so they can afford to come to school and there will be less chances of them suffering so about 12 it's a big risk but what happens when we uh, get into academic aspect uh, as uh, mrs sangeeta was sharing like lkg if they forego some lessons i i have confidence that with some additional inputs we can they have lot of time to uh, Uh, write board exams or whatever uh, exams, but uh, ninth and tenth, it becomes very difficult. I don't know. Uh, God save them because tenth, whoever is there uh, now, if they have to write board exam, I mean definitely such decisions will not taken. Uh, it will be a student friendly decision, but still that the somewhere in the back of our minds, like teachers and students will be there in case if board exam. Uh, is conducted. How do we go? We are, how do we go on to cope? Up? If you take ninth and tenth standard, any schools there will be a rigorous academic session happening for them to prepare for their twelfth and the post twelfth competitive exam. The preparation starts from seventh standard, eighth standard, or in some school ninth and tenth. So they have lost that very important uh, or the precious period where their actual no basics is there as an educator. I believe the basics starts from LKG, but still, when they come to this uh, higher grades, the planning of their uh, careers or the future takes some shape. So probably that is one of the reason why they are calling ninth and uh, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, so that their uh, examination if they have to give board examination that should not. Because already uh, the year in the year one semester we have lost. So in another semester, how much we are going to be productive and what will happen is thing. So the preference is given to the higher classes because of one reason of this, they have to prepare for board examination. Right, ma'am. Uh, I was hoping that we could get Dr. Roy back because I would. I'm very keen on finding out what his SOP is, and I'm immensely thankful that he joined us with. less than 48 hours to go to his school reopening uh sir if we can be of any help i'm told that he can listen to us sir so sir if we can be of any help to you in the process of reopening please do let us know 
we'll be more than happy to assist. Uh, well, that, those are the questions that I had for both of you. If there are any closing remarks that you would like to make, uh, Dr. Arora, if you can go first with you. Uh, thank you. I, uh, for all the, the, the teacher community and all the, the, the administrators uh, who are listening and who are participating in this, I would say let's not um, lose hope. And uh, uh, the situation is different. The times are different. But, and yes, the different situation uh, require different solution. So we have to have that open-mindedness about uh, the whole thing. And yes, the learner is the center of any decision that we are taking, even the government, whatever they are thinking of, the learner is, a, is in the center. And yes, as a teaching community, we also have to think in that way. And we have to take everyone along with us. Uh, the parents, the teachers, the government agencies, everybody has to work in synchronization to bring the situation to a new normal. I'm not saying normal, but a new normal, because this is not uh, a situation we have already thought of or we, everybody, anyone has, uh, you know, in wildest dream think of this kind of a situation will happen. So everybody is thinking about it. Something positive will definitely come out of it. And yes, the assessment process, which we have been talking about for years to come in which new education policy is talking about this kind of uh, flexibility also, and which the, the CBSE is saying they're going to put from 2023, not before that. I think this COVID-19 situation is going to force us to re-look at it again. And uh, this board examination pressure because of it, we are thinking that uh, um, our children should not lose out one year, that we have to rethink about it according to the new education policy, that two years plan, that ninth and 10th, that can be done in two years plan that will give us that kind of a freedom to uh, the children that they are not losing it out, they can do it in this. But right now, this 10th and 12th, they have to go forward because we can't lose out one year. That is our assessment criteria. That is our educational way of going ahead in our country. So in this six months, this can't be changed. We are a huge country with different diverse needs and diverse background. And take uh, to take a you know homogeneous decision, I think, no government can take it, no government. Even, even if you talk about Delhi, um, even in Delhi, there are different types of school, different types of client, or clientele, the same thing is in any state you take it up. So we have to think about everyone. And this online is also not a right solution because we know it, we don't have this kind of an internet um, uh, bandwidth you know, in all over the country. So, uh, we all are struggling. We are all finding out new solution. And let me tell you, and uh, I, uh, the, all participants will agree with it, that we all thought of and we have done whatever is the best for our school. And we want to ensure that this best will go out again to our students post pandemic also. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, if I may be allowed to crack a small joke, when you hear a mathematician talking about a new normal, you know things are serious. Veena ma'am, if I may come to you next after that very, very poor joke. Mm. Um, if once we decide to reopen school, probably we'll have to start it in a staggered manner. Like how they've already decided that 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th will come. Then the lower grades will join the school. But... Uh, there will be few challenges, whether you start with the higher classes, you start with the lower classes, the challenges will be there and we can overcome only with a very efficient and effective uh, plan and contribution. This is a truncated academic year. It is condensed, the academic year is condensed. So we will have to have a lot of strategies to complete the syllabus or we have to reduce the content of the cur curriculum. Now, the second thing what uh, we have to understand here is how technology can give us some solace in the process of teaching and learning, and it has to be on and continuous at least for some time. Now, one uh, big question or one concern what personally I felt is we are all living in cities with all uh, technology and gadgets with a phone call, I can get a gadget today, today to my office or 
to my place but what is happening in rural part of india how are they coping up with this crisis and how many students are suffering and how the parents are able to support them in the rural part and what will happen to them when they come back this is what is bothering me too much uh, because even our children i know they are going through a lot of stress or pressure or they are not connected to school but still they are lucky enough to see school to see teachers to learn to get something support uh, parents are able to support them financially and uh, giving them the uh, needs but uh, i do it's a question mark what is happening in the rural part of india now the next thing very important what i think is safety of children inside and outside school once we start the school these two things have to be considered and one more uh, thing which bothers all educators here is when it reopens we should ensure that all children will get back to school very important because uh, that is what when we are having meeting with the education department the first thing comes up is we should ensure there are no dropouts possibility is there possibility is there because uh, a, a child losing one academic year and not connected with learning process is very dangerous emotionally and psychologically and for the development of the uh, child and along with academics we have to address the emotional well being of children as the situation has caused lot of disturbance to reduce their stress and the pressure so many questions to answer many doubts to be cleared a big responsibility on all educators i would like to conclude thank you i would like to thank uh, mr abhishek dutt uh, notebook team team for having me on this session i have been uh, attending the webinars for quite some time and uh, wonderful topics thought provoking triggers our emotional uh, thinking wonderful wonderful to be part of these webinars and a panel member today thank you so much ma'am the privilege is entirely ours we have had the privilege of hosting such phenomenal educators over so many weeks and we just can't seem to stop honestly this is this is getting addictive for us that's where we are at right now it is really actually it's addictive that's a right word oh <laughs> uh, well thank you so much uh, both of you dr roy if you can hear us uh, all the best for your school reopening on monday i hope you get the turnout that you're looking for uh, and at any point if you would like to share your sop with the rest of the education fraternity we would happily be the medium uh just one parting thought that i would leave everybody here with because we have so many educators who have tuned in uh, we keep talking to telecom companies very regularly if you are aware the bsnl uh, the bsnl has a ott app where notebook powers the education uh, segment of that so we when we talk to these telecom companies we are seeing a massive push within the telecom companies to enable it infrastructure outside urban areas reliance uh, geo has i think fiber connectivity to 1 lakh 10000 village panchayat offices and they are now setting up the routers to ensure that villages get uh, high speed wifi connectivity and the one thought that we keep bouncing around inside the office because vernacular education is again very close to our hearts is that today schools in various parts of the country have the opportunity of extending their schools beyond their boundary walls and saying what if i simulcast my live classes to villages around me then what happens to the indian education system this is perhaps this crystal ball thinking that i wanted to leave all of you with thank you thank you so much for this wonderful session thank you thank you i would thank you ma'am i would now hand this over to ochin for his vote of thanks ochin over to you so i think we really had a very uh, informative session and some great thoughts dr arora dr roy and uh, ms bina i think uh, i really i was listening to each one of you very carefully and some very nice uh, you know ideas came in and we exchanged thoughts so i think uh, this is the spirit of together for education webinars to connect centers of excellence to ensure that we get to exchange ideas 
I think the concept of blended learning that was highlighted, and we have been discussing about this for quite some time. In fact, we had a full session. In fact, it was our last session that we had on this. So we all believe that this is the way to go. But having said that, as is Vina very rightly mentioned, that no technology can replace the joy of being in schools. You know, the joy is a very separate joy. The joy of sitting beside your best friend and participating in a mischief. You know, that, that joy is unparalleled. We, we all have been, we all have gone through the journey. We have been in schools, we understand. And I think very rightly mentioned that learners are in the center. And it's important to take each and every stakeholder along. And that's what we have seen around the globe. And I'm sure that will be appropriately taken care of by esteemed educators. Now, coming to, coming to the concern with regard to students outside urban areas, students in small towns, students in villages, with regard to possibility of dropouts after losing a year, I think it's our responsibility as a civil society to come forward with all our might and ensure that all of us chip in and try to help. In fact, you know, right when the, no, the entire lockdown started, in the month of March, remember, we saw significant traction and we were analyzing, you know, the kind of footfall that we had and very consciously we took two decisions. First, we made the entire platform free from March onwards. We wanted to really ensure that students are benefited. And second, we gave a lot of focus on technological handholding. The queries that were coming in, mails that were coming in, phone calls that were coming in. And we saw great adoption in rural areas. As all of you are aware, that apart from CBSC and ICC, we also have content for state boards, for states like UP, West Bengal, and many others are in pipeline. And we, we really saw the kind of response that we got with regard to vernacular content, bilingual content. In fact, we also had uh, quite a few, a series of, I'll say, a series of teachers training with regard to schools, state board schools in remote areas. And we are very happy to see the kind of enthusiasm that we saw in our esteemed educators, the kind of technology adoption that we saw. That we saw. And today I can tell this with full confidence that as a nation, we are blessed with the kind of internet connectivity we have. I don't deny the fact that we still have a long way to go, but as Shubhayu mentioned, things are really improving and really improving at a fast pace. And also data prices are among the cheapest in the world. So technology adoption combined with internet penetration with the aid of, and if you look at smartphone penetration, it's amongst the highest in the world. I can tell this. So really, I, I can tell this to you that that time is not far when as a nation, we will be able to ensure, and in fact, each and every state, in fact, the new education policy also, things like being discussed, like bilingual content, giving stress on mother tongue, at least in initial years. So I can say these are, these are really steps in the right direction, which will ensure that as a nation, we progress with each passing year towards the objective of ensuring that each and every child gets access to quality education. So I think it was really a great session. And I'll, the message for the evening, as Vinamay mentioned, big responsibility on, on educators. I'll just add a line and say, educators are doing a phenomenal job. The way our teachers have stepped up during this testing time. The responsibility not only lies with our educators, but responsibility lies with each one of us. Responsibility lies with parents. Responsibility lies with all stakeholders. And together, we will make it happen. My best wishes to Dr. Roy. Dr. Roy, if you're listening to us, since your schools are due to open day after tomorrow, our best wishes for that. And our best wishes to each one of you. And I'm sure I have full confidence in the might of our educators, in your dedication. And I'm 100% sure that together, we will make it. Thank you. Take care and goodbye. Thank you.